Arranging the layout of your project to create great workflow can really help to keep the creative juices flowing. That's why in this video, we're going to talk about workspaces versus screen sets in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Workspaces, previously known as lenses, are a great feature to quickly change the layout of your screen to suit the current task that you're currently working on. Now you may have also noticed that we have a feature called screen sets, and you may be wondering what's the difference between the two of them. Well, what I've done in this video is run the same scenarios through each of these features to find out what the differences are. We'll be talking about the strengths and weaknesses at the end. But first of all, let's get started with workspace. So I'm going to be running through these scenarios first of all by using workspaces. Now workspaces is an incredibly powerful tool for quickly changing the layout of your screen to make it more suitable for the specific phase of the project you're in. That could be, you know, recording, mixing, mastering, etc. So I've got my project open here. As you can see, it's fairly well developed. I've got um what have I got there? 69 tracks all in all. I've got a whole bunch of buses that you can see over this side here, which I'm using. And you can see my tracks at the top here. There's a mixture of audio and MIDI tracks as well. Now I can quickly change the layout using workspaces by going to the top right and then clicking on this, this drop down menu here. So I'll click on that and I'll go, for example, to make beats. So I'll click on make beats. And you can see after a moment or two, it updates and you can see this is much more suitable for making beats. It's got the matrix view open there. Very, very cool. Now I could change it again, go up to the top right. And this time let's go to arranger. And after a moment or two, it updates and you will see that it's got the arranger track open there and it's ready for me to start using the arranger feature in Cakewalk. But I actually want to start off by doing some mixing, okay? That's what I'm focused on at the moment. So I'll go up to the top right using the workspaces drop down. I'll go and I'll click on mix, okay? Wait for a moment for this to open up. And you'll see it's got something much more suitable for mixing. Now it's much more suitable and it may be just perfect for you. But we're all individuals, we like things a little bit different. So I'd like to do some tweaks to this. First of all, I think I'd like to have the console view taking up most of the or all of the height of this area here. So I'm just going to go down to the tab where it says console here, double click on that, and that opens up that to full height. Now I can access my plugins obviously here by clicking on the, the plus button here and I can get my plugin. So I don't really need this sort of plugin view over here. So I'll just collapse that on the right hand side. And then I don't often use the inspector over here. So I'll just collapse that. I like it to be like this when I'm mixing. Nice large mixer type view. Now I've got um, two areas here. Of course, I have my tracks view and then I have my buses view over here and then there's this other view over here which is open which is the outputs I don't really want that so I'll just drag that all the way over to the side there okay and that would be a view now that I'd be happy to mix in now I could go up and I could save this as my new standard way of having my mix view arranged and that would be fine but I do need to remember this is, if I save this it's going to be like this for all projects so whenever I open up this workspace in another project it's going to be like that so I could go up to the workspaces menu click on that again and then go down and I could click on save workspace but I don't want to do that I don't want to destroy the default setting for uh, mix so instead I'm just going to click on new workspace okay so I'll click on that and I'm going to name it oh my mix okay click on that and then click on OK to close that. And now I can easily get to this view by going up here and then clicking on my mix, OK? Now I can control what was saved in that workspace. If I go to manage workspaces here, click on that, brings up this dialogue. And for example, I could, um, you know, control what's loaded up in terms of um, things down here. I could have, say, keyboard shortcuts included and apply that um, or save that to my workspace you know, like so. Um, so we can control things like that. We can delete them. We can add new workspaces from here, etc. So I'll click on OK and that's done. 
Now let's say I'm working happily here, but I find now I actually want to do some editing to some of those drums. Okay, so let's rearrange things here a little bit. I'll just double click on the console view. In fact, I'll close the console view. I'll just close it completely here. Um, I'm going to find my drum MIDI that I want to edit. It's just over here somewhere. Just squash this up a little bit so I can zoom in on what I want. So I'll just double click on this MIDI here um, to bring up this piano roll. Um, it's opened up with that piano roll open and the drum map. I don't really want that. So I'll just drag that piano roll down and then I can see my drum map info here. Now actually, let's say for example, I want to have the VST instrument open or the, the synth open for that. I'll just um, double click on piano roll just to squash that down to the bottom and then I'll go up to the actual um, plugin so I'll just double click on that or click on that I should say and then you can see that I have this addictive drums plugin here so let's say I want to have that open because I may be changing some things about that and I'll just drag this up a little bit so that I can see my drum MIDI somewhere here oh there it is found it and I could go ahead and work on that and then make changes to my plugin as well okay that's great um, now if I think I want to come back to this later it would be a good idea if I'm only using workspaces to save this okay and we're gonna do that it's not the solution I would actually use but let's do it anyway so I'll go up to my workspaces here click on this again and I'll create a new workspace which is uh, let's just call this drums okay so I've got that open, I'm working on my drums, and then I think I'm done there, I want to go back to mixing. So of course I go up to workspaces, yeah, I click on my mix, and we can go back after a moment or two to the mix view, yeah? Got that? And then of course, um, let's say for example, actually I want to do um, some changes to this mix, I'll go to the snare drum, where is it? Where are you, snare drum? There you are. And I want to make some changes to the EQ. So I've double, I've clicked on the icon on the uh, plug in there, and then I'll make some changes to that EQ. Okay, that's all well and good, but I still want to make some changes to the way that snare drum is behaving or all the beats it appears on. So I'm going to go back again to my drums view. Now, interesting thing about this drums view that I do want to point out. I've now saved this as a workspace, but it may not be very likely that I want to use this in lots of other projects. Just remember that. It's now there all the time as a workspace, but it's highly unlikely that I'll use this view for other projects. In my case, maybe for you, you would. But anyway, I'll make some changes to those drums again, and I think, yep, I want to go back and continue editing the EQ on that snare. So clicking on workspaces, go back to uh, my mix, wait for a moment or two, Ta-da, there's my mix, and I'll just have to go again to find that snare and open up that EQ again, okay? So it's it's kind of useful, it's, it's really quite useful, um, but as I say, there's a couple of downsides. First of all, when I came back to this view, of course, I had to find um, this EQ and open it again because... Um, it wasn't a part, I hadn't saved it as part of the workspace. I could go ahead and save it, I guess, as a part of the workspace. But again, that seems very sort of specific for something which I could use in a number of different projects, okay? You may be starting to figure out where the advantages may be for screen sets in a moment, but let's get to that in a moment. But um, very, very useful. Now, I feel that this is very useful, mostly in terms of creating layouts which are going to be useful across many projects, okay? I wouldn't really necessarily want to see um, this cluttered up with a whole bunch of very unique workspaces, which, I don't know, it just seems silly to have them all there if I'm only going to use them once or twice in one project, okay? But that's what happens with workspaces very very powerful as i say for specific phases in a project but how would i go through this scenario using screen sets well before we do talk about screen sets if you are finding this video useful could you go ahead and hit the like button for me do it right away so that you don't forget if you're not finding this video useful hit the dislike button twice and move on with your life now if you do like this kind of content make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified about my other videos now Back to this video. 
So let's run through those two scenarios again. That is setting up a mix view and a drum edit view, but this time let's use screen sets. So here I am in my project again. Now the first thing you want to make sure of is that you can see the screen sets module. It isn't showing for me at the moment in the top bar, so I'll just right click on a blank space in the top bar, then go down to modules and then click on screen set. It's appeared at the top here. Now currently I have screen set four selected and I've got numbers one through to 10 here. Now when you first load it up, it may not have a screen set selected at all. So I do recommend that you start off by selecting at least one. Now I'm actually gonna select number one because I, that's where I want my mix screen set to be, okay, in the first slot. So I'll click on number one there and it's gonna rearrange the screen to whatever was stored in number one before. Now I'll go ahead and create my mix view. So I'll go down to that tab at the bottom, the console tab, double click, that's gonna bring that up to full view as I did before. And then I'll just get rid of that panel at the side. And that's basically my mix view. Now I like at this stage to name this so I can see which screen set is which. So I'll go to the drop down menu in the screen set module and then go down to rename current screen set and then I'll just type in mix, hit enter, and you can see that that's been renamed to mix. That's helpful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, hit and create my drum edit screen set. However, before you do that, do make sure that you select a different slot in the screen set module. Otherwise, you will be overwriting the work that you've done in this first slot, okay? We'll demonstrate that a little bit later when we really see how screen sets work. So make sure you hit a new slot. I'll click on number two. It's created a new view here and I'm gonna adapt this to how I want it. So I am going to double click on this MIDI here. That's gonna hopefully, if I scroll up or down, show my drum MIDI there, that's fine, just there. Get rid of this side module here, get rid of this side module here. And then I'll just make sure I've got that plugin open by clicking on this icon here. And there's my addictive drums plugin. I'll just pop that over there. So that's a basic setup for my drum editing. So again, I'll go up to the drop down menu in the screen set modules and I'll go down to rename current screen set and I will name this drum edit hit enter on the keyboard and that is renamed. Now, of course, I can easily switch back to my mix view by clicking now on number one. Let's do that. And after a second or two, I'll rearrange things and we're back to our mix view. Now, I could change it as well, and it's much more handy to change it on the keyboard. So numbers one through to zero on your keyboard represents screen sets one through to 10, okay, with zero being 10. So I'm gonna switch back to my drum edit view by hitting two on the keyboard this time. So I've switched back to that. And you know what? I'm thinking to myself, I don't need this plugin anymore. I'm done with that. So I'll close it down. And in fact, while I'm at it, I'll just expand this top area up and adjust things a little bit so I can more clearly see my MIDI. Okay, that's fine. And I'm working away at that, but I still want to make a quick change to the mix. So I hit number one on the keyboard. And that's going to take me back to my mix screen set. And what I wanted to do in there was go over to the snare drum and open its EQ plugin like so, make a change to the EQ. Of course, I would never really do it like this without listening to it, but that's how I'm gonna do it. And that's fine, I may come back to that later, but first of all, I just wanna edit those drums a bit more. So I'll hit number two to go back. Now, importantly, when we go back, it's just as we left it, okay? Although originally when we created this screen set, we had the actual drum plugin open and things were arranged a little bit differently. Once we flick between the two screen sets, it will save the current state of that screen set when you change from it to another one. In other words, it will remember its current state, okay? You don't have to set it all up again to how you left it. So again, I can go back to the uh, mix view by hitting one on the keyboard and when I go back there that plugin that I was using there is already open of course if I close it down and I flip between the two next time I come back it will be closed also now importantly what you need to understand with screen sets is they're existing on a project by project basis in other words we've saved them as you know mix and drum edit but they're not going to be available in other projects okay they are actually particular to this project project and that can be handy when you've got very specific situations that you're working on now if you do find that you really want to use this screen set in another project you can do that in a roundabout way so first of all you've got to make sure that you've got 
both projects open okay now I've already got one other project open so I'll go up to window up here and I'll just go over to the other project by clicking its name here so I'm in this other project I'll go up to the screen sets module open uh, click on the drop down there and then I can just, just go down to import screen sets from I don't buy workspaces which is the name of my other project I'll click on that and that imports give it a moment to it and it imports those screen sets now it may not appear exactly the same as it did in the other project um i guess it's going to depend on what plugins are available in both projects etc etc but it's going to be an approximation okay so that is screen sets so let's quickly conclude by talking about what i think are the advantages and disadvantages of each and where i think you should use them so which one should you use, workspaces or screen sets? Well, I think you should use both, depending on the situation. I think workspaces are great for layouts, which can be used across many projects, generic layouts, if you like. That can be really useful, for example, if you know you've done your tracking and you're entering into the mix stage and you know you want to go to your regular mix layout that you like to have. You could just load up that workspace and you're up and running now screen sets are much more useful for layouts which are more specific to that project at that specific time if you find yourself switching between two different views for two different tasks quite often then i'd highly recommend that you use screen sets it's going to be much better than continually rejigging your layout which can be very time wasting and really dampen those creative juices let me know what you think in the comments down below i'd love to hear from you on that also check the link in the description down below for my patreon.com where for as little as one dollar per month you can help me help you by making more videos like this and i'll see you in the next video